What's going on my revolutionaries? It's Antonio with Revolution Gaming bringing to you the newest, hottest, latest Magic the Gathering news and an article that I ran across today that was extremely interesting to me. Uh, you know, maybe the the title is clickbait, whatever you want to call it, but I read it. I read the article and there are some good points that have been made in this article. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through this article a little bit and uh kind of see where we are with double masters but before we get into that as always this video as with most or all of our videos is brought to you by emeralddragongames.com go check them out at emeralddragongames.com get all of your tabletop gaming needs and always remember to support your local LGS so the title of the article, written by Joshua Nelson, uh, it was posted July 20th of 2020. You can find a link to the article in the description down below. Uh, it's titled, it's an opinion, Magic the Gathering's Double Masters Might Kill the Game. So let's go through this article, see what it has to say, and then I'm going to give you uh, some of my opinions on it. And if you agree with me, great. If you don't, great. That's what we're here for. We're here to revolutionize the way Magic News is brought to you guys. And I'm hoping to put out more of these videos. Uh, we don't just focus on Magic the Gathering. We are Revolution Gaming. I got a project in the works to break down all the different systems for Ashes of Creation. A new MMORPG that is coming up. So I hope you guys watch and enjoy that. If you would, click that subscribe, click the little bell icon, so that way you get notified anytime we go live. So let's get into this article. So it begins. Hello there, fans, players, and collectors of Wizards of the Coast premier trading card game, Magic the Gathering. As you may know by now, pre-order sales have begun on Magic's newest expansion set, Double Masters. To the chagrin of many players who can't quite cough up the money for so many releases in the first place. Problem number one. <clears throat> That's already a problem. Seeing as Wizards of the Coast literally just released Jumpstart, their latest set five days ago. But the problem get worse from there. Buckle up yourself and your wallets because it could otherwise cost you later. Nice White Steel Colossus. Lately, there's been a strong buzz on YouTube and on Twitter about the price of Double Masters VIP Edition Packs containing a mere 34 cards, four of which are rare. Uh, and there's a quick note about that. Yes, four are rare, but they're also upshifting eight cards from uncommon to rare to put into the, uh, the rare slot box toppers, which was also released today. It's going to be a two to one. So you're going to get... Two rares to every one mythic, and two of those rares could literally be expedition map that was upshifted from uncommon to rare. It could be Urza's Tower Mine or Power Plant, which was upshifted from common to rare, uh, just for those special printings. So that's misleading the information that Wizards put out there about the two rare or four of which are rare in these 34 card packs. Because you could literally get uncommons and commons that were upshifted to rare just because of their special uh, their special art. So this premier edition of an already premier expansion set comes at a seat price of $100 USD on average. We've seen some of these packs being sold for $340 for four of them. So at an average price of $85 a piece. But that was on eBay and and may therefore be an outlier, which is very true, but Brian Lewis, also known commonly as The Professor, and YouTuber Vince Chandler, known by his username of Pleasant Kenobi, have voiced their immediate and very dire concern about the price point. You can watch Pleasant Kenobi's analysis below, so if you click on the link, go to the article, you can watch the analysis from uh, Pleasant Kenobi, good, really good streamer, uh, good YouTuber that uh, really loves magic. And scroll down even further for the professor's deeper thoughts. Clearly, this shall not do. You know, so here's a tweet from Pre Pleasant Kenobi. Do LGS owners have to moderate teen spending habits in their stores? MTG Pack says 13 plus if a 14 year old went to buy a booster on a whim at FNM. A store owner worker wouldn't bat an eye if they went to buy a VIP 
they have to ask some questions, right? Uh, and there's, you know, that's a, it's kind of an American thing. We kind of play into, you know, in the corporate sector, in the, the sector of selling product to people. We play into the, how do I put it, the addiction aspect. And I've been called in that. I mean, I love buying magic cards. I love buying boost, booster packs. I walk, I literally have to purposely not go into LGSs sometime because I know that when I go in, I'm going to buy product. Even if I don't want to buy product. I don't need product. I just like to buy product. So anyway. Uh, so there is that actual issue. You know, so. Clearly, this shall not do. If people may recall, there was an item up for purchase when the Throne of Eldraine expansion set first came out. It featured a few collector boosters and some other swag items, but was ultimately not enough to justify its price point. The professor called the item out as catering to the whales of the industry, meaning people who, who would buy something like this to say they have it. This product is quite the same. At 100 American dollars and quite possibly 100 pounds sterling cross upon, according to Pleasant Kenobi, which, if you don't know, that's like $134 American. Uh, 34 cars are not going to cut that price unless the cars they're in collectively worth $100 or more. It's absurd to think people will buy this item. And that's the thing. When we buy something that is considered collector's boosters or is considered highly collectible, we expect to get our value out of it. But we also know there's variance in packs. But with them only printing four packs... So, an example. Right here. I got a box of Ikoria. Right? Ikoria. Got a box of Ikoria. Booster box I opened on stream. You can check out that video also. But anyway, I got a box of Ikoria. Do I expect every single pack inside this box of Ikoria to be $2.50 or $3.50, whatever it breaks down to as far as the price goes? No, I don't. But I'm getting 32 packs. So if one pack is, say, worth a dollar, because everything in it is just bobo bulk trash, right? I expect another pack in there to be worth $4. The average of $5 divided by 2 is 250 or two dollars and fifty cents equaling that one pack paid for the other pack that came up short well in double masters vip you get four packs packs one two and three are thirty dollar packs each collectively you know so that's 90 bucks you spent 400 for four packs you got 90 dollars in value which means that last pack in that box will have to be a minimum of $300 in value for you to just break even. That's what we call gambling, folks. <laughs> um, you are literally gambling. You know, and they, they market these as, you know, like a booster box. And you say, well, you're not gambling. It's made for draft. Okay. And that's fair. Packs cost $2.50. If I buy three packs for draft, odds are one of those three will be worth more than $2.50. One worth $2.50 and one worth less than $2.50. There's a good chance of that happening. Therefore, it breaks even. Not gambling, you're actually drafting it to... Or you're buying those packs not to gamble, but to draft to play the game. When you're talking about collector's VIP, on the other hand... There's four packs. Well, you're not drafting three of those. Because I sure enough... I almost cursed there. I, I sure enough am not buying a $100 booster pack to take one card out of it and pass the rest of it on to someone else. Not happening. And I'm sure not buying three of them for $300 to take one card out and pass the rest over. So, that's a... Uh, that's where I stand on that, right? So, say you have a kid that... Oh, he actually... Uh, 
explains that. So we'll, we'll read the rest of this. So clearly this shall not do. If people may recall, there was an item. I think I said that. The professor... Da, da, da. Okay. The professor called this item for Wells. This product is not quite the same at 100... Or 34 cards are not going to cut that price collectively worth 100. It's sir, think people buy this item. that We already went over that. Okay. Here we go. And then there is the issue of gambling. Pleasant Kenopi mentions in a recent tweet that it is totally possible for 13-year-olds with affluence beyond their expertise. So say they walk into the shop, they want to buy a booster box for 100 bucks. Well, the store owner is like, hey, I bought this uh, Throne of Eldrain VIP for whatever, $180, $200, whatever the... the uh, wholesale price from the distributor is and I'll make more of a profit than I will you know that I bought this from a, this booster box for 80 bucks I'm gonna make a $20 profit at you know $100 for the booster box but I'm gonna make a $90 profit for $100 off this collector and then they kind of indirectly influence this 13 year old to like hey look you could get $250, $300 worth of value out of this collector's pack because, you know, the 13-year-old don't have that expertise. He's trusting, and trust me, there are our shady LGSs out there that will do this. Anyway, um, so he goes on to say, and, and that's, that's what Pleasant Kenobi was talking about. So anyway... Uh, expertise outside their will. In fact, buy these VIP edition packs of Double Masters in mass and inevitably either A, not get what they paid for. Basically, the pack is less valued than the $100. B, anger their parents for spending over $100 on card stock. And C, theoret theoretically cause those parents outrage enough for them to bring up the Loot Crate lawsuits that have hit the video game industry so hard, which is a huge hit on Wizards of the Coast if the concerned parties land the hit. So, a bunch of parents get together, say, these people, you have enticed our, our, uh, our kids into buying this product with the hope that, you know, with the belief that they're going to open it up and get their value. They didn't get their value. They lost money. And it's all a, all a scam. So therefore, we're suing you. If that lawsuit goes through, that's really bad for Wizards. Really bad. So, uh, he goes on to say, Ultimately, as we, the Magic Gar Gathering players, need to be absolutely terrified of this new price precedent that Wizards of the Coast is setting. It could very well kill the game we know and love. But what do you think about Dust and Ma Double Masters? Inevi inevitably, we will be showing all previews, so on and so forth. He talks about the previews, and he said, Spoiler alert, the cards are not nearly worth $100 even combined, but we'd love to hear your opinions. So what made me want to talk about this this video, or this, this article? And it is this uh, response, where it first sentence, and this is what I hear... This is really what made me want to make this video. I hear this a lot. Is, so, not every product is for everyone. If you're a budget player without a lot of discretionary income, at some point in your life you got to stop being jealous of everyone else who has more money to waste on games. VIP packs are all foil and they're not for everyone. They're not for most people, honestly. I can afford to waste money on them, but I have no desire. At some level, Wizards is run by a corporation, and the logic here is if you want to be objective and rational, is that costs do go up, both operational and functional, or operational and manufacturing, and the price of the booster for the standard set has gone up only by a dollar over 25 years. Well, I don't know where he's talking about, because I remember I was buying cons of Tarkir five years ago for 80 bucks a booster box, and... Uh... Now it's a hundred bucks a booster box for this trash fire called Ikoria. I mean, I don't know. But anyway, just saying. Also, product quality has gone down over the past five years if you have not seen the millions of videos. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll go with it. Based on inflation, it should be five dollars of boosters. Okay. Where does Wizards make up that money? They're a corporation, not a benevolent nonprofit, so they are going to make it up. They do it by offering more products at different price points. Clearly, it doesn't cost $100 per box of VIP cards, so the margins are going to be a lot better. Some goes 
for non four dollar boosters and supplemental products. Same goes for non four dollar boosters and supplemental products. I think they need to lay off a bit and get back in less products per year. This is him saying, hey, the Wizards need to slow down. Four standard, one Masters, one Experimental, four to five Commander decks, and we're done. I'd even love for them to scale back standard to three sets per year and give every set an extra monthly month to play. I'm not buying any Jump Starter Core 21 in order to afford Double Masters. So basically, he is... And this, this is the point I'm going to make here in just a minute. He is scaling back, buying... Okay, first off, he wants standard to last for four... Four months instead of instead of three, right? Uh, but he's not going to buy a core standard set because you got to remember standard is about to rotate, so you're going to need core 2021 cards. And he's not buying Jumpstart, which is fine if you don't play Legacy or Commander, you can't use Jumpstart anyway. And quite frankly, I got some Jumpstart packs here that I opened, the decks, two packs, you know, and not really worth it you know if you're gonna buy you need the legacy cards out of there just buy the individual cards uh i bought these to open on stream so anyway um but he's scaling back he's basically being forced by wizards and their price point to make a choice do i continue fueling my standard decks or do i buy this high powered overpriced product and that's, that's where the whole issue... The whole issue comes in with this sentence here and this sentence here. Everything else... I don't care what he said about everything else. I mean, yes, uh, a dollar over 25 years? Are you kidding me? I mean, I was buying booster boxes in 2002 for like 60 bucks. I'm buying them for 40 bucks now. I mean... Come on, it's that was what 17 years ago, 18 years ago. So you're talking 25 years, only a dollar. I mean, whatever. Anyway, so this is where I want to go with this video. This is what I want to talk about. Is it really what you know that the the comment said that it's not for everybody? My question is: is why isn't the Double Masters VIP for everyone? Why can't it be for everyone? Um, so I, I just want to break down something. I got another tab here where I did some some financial math, so to speak. Right? And we're going to get to that in just a minute. Here's the thing. You're paying, what? You get 24 packs, 300 bucks for Double Master. Let's just use the round number of $300. That equals out to $12.50 per pack. Why can't you sell the Double Masters VIP, where you're getting 34 cards, but only 4 packs? Why can't you sell 12 packs of that for $600? I mean, you're essentially getting 2 packs in 1, because you're getting 34 cards. Now, granted, 2 of them are tokens, so you're really only getting, what, uh, 32 cards. But it's still twice as many as... The Double Masters non-VIP, so you sell 12 packs for $600, which equals out to $50 a pack. So therefore, if little Timmy wants to walk in and say, man, I want me a pack of VIP, it only costs him 50 bucks, and there's a high probable chance he will get at least $50 out of his pack. Even if he hits the worst of the worst rares, there's a high chance he gets 50 bucks back. You don't put yourself in danger of parents getting mad. You know, things of that nature. At least you reduce the risk of parents being mad about them spending 50 Because if they say, hey, Dad, I spent 50 bucks on this. Why'd you spend $50 on cards? But, Dad, this card is worth 100 bucks. Oh, that's a good thing. You can sell that? Yeah, I can sell this, Dad. Okay. Plus, say somebody like me. Wanted to buy a box of it. 600 bucks, yeah, man, that's a lot. But I get 12 packs. Essentially, I'm getting 24 packs because it's double of everything in the VIP. And it is gating people out from just, you know, uh, the random casual of just buying 50 of these boxes and buying it out where your wells can't buy it. But it also sets a price point high enough that you're making money off the wells. And... 
Somebody like me can buy one box where the whale can still buy 10 boxes, 12 boxes, 20 boxes, whatever. It helps the LGS. It helps put more cards in players' hands like myself, uh, players like you. And it creates a better, you know, business model for Wizards, in my personal opinion. So, where am I going with all this? Because he said, well, you know, they need to make profit. Really? Okay. Well, let's, let's do some math. Actually, I already did it for you, because I came prepared. Print Ninja. Uh, they are not a sponsor, just so you know. We are not affiliated in any way, shape, or form with Print Ninja. But I went through and I pulled up all the specs of a Magic card. They're 2.5 inch by 3.5 three inch. Card details. How many cards per deck? Well, we're doing booster boxes, and there's 360 cards in a booster box on a 24-card booster box. So... 360 cards. You have the Black Core 310 uh, GSM. Uh, Wizards use its Blue Core, but that's the closest thing that they had. If you can see, they don't have... They have Blue Core, but it's 280, which is thinner than what Wizards uses. Wizards uses 310 GSM, so that's the one I selected. A single card back, because you only have the one card back on a Wizard card. Uh, you know, only one card back. And finish style is gloss, gloss varnish, which is same finish style that a uh, wizard uses. Specialty we can do, we did a basic foil stamp and silver, just like the say every card's rare in this. The boxing, packaging, shrink wrap, everything, gloss, non, so on and so forth. No instructions, and we did a quantity of ten thousand, ten thousand, and we click calculate. Click, calculate. Comes up for 10,000. Now, these are booster boxes. Booster boxes. Which tells us with the little foil, you know, on there. And that's every card having the foil. Not just the rares and mythics. $134,247.58 or $13.42 a booster box. It's what it comes out to. $13.42 per booster. Now, I have no affiliation with Print Ninja or their printing company. I don't have people that I've been printing with for years upon years upon years, of, you know, 25 plus years like Magic has. I don't have those relationships. So... But let's just say on the high end, it costs him $3.42 to print a single booster box of Double Masters. And that's if every card is foil and every card has a hollow stamp on it. Every single one. $13. That's on the high end. $13.50. You mean to tell me they justifiably tell you you got to spend $400 per pack? You know, or per box for four packs? Essentially, eight packs. You know, eight packs. Let's do eight packs. Let's do this. Hold on. We'll do it. This is the VIP. What it would cost me to print the VIP on Print Ninja by myself. So, there's four packs. 34 cards per pack. All right. 136. So, 136 a box. Change this to 136. Let's recalculate. Oh, I gotta check a box. All right. Uh, shrink wrap. No cardboard insert. Basic foil. Hundred. Uh, up here we gotta do card stock. We need foil luxury stock. This is as close as I can get to foil luxury. Oh, it's not three ten. It's three hundred. But whatever. It's all foil. Calculate. What am I missing? Oh. With the foil stamp. And silver. Calculate. There we go. It would cost me to print 10,000 booster boxes. $47,788.53. Or $4.76 each. And you mean to tell me that you can justify me having to pay $100 a pack? If you break this down... This is a dollar and like 
20 some odd cents per pack. Basically, if it's $4.80 a, a, a pack, and, or for the booster box, that's $1.20 a pack. That's what it costs them to print every single card in that pack, in foil, with the hollow stamp. It costs them a dollar and twenty cents a pack, and they're wanting to make a hundred. And now, let me reiterate this: it is not Wizards making a hundred dollars a pack. They are selling it to the distributor, so they are more than likely making fifty dollars a pack because they are selling it to the distributor at fifty bucks a pack. The distributor is then turning around, which normal um, um, market market procedure, standard market procedure, is 150%. So $50 plus 50 cents, or 50% 50 of that, which is $25, they would then sell it to the LGSs at $75 a pack. Standard markup there is 125%, or $100 a pack, which is also why you see some of them going for like 80, 90 bucks a pack, because they're undercutting the standard market, or standard market procedure so and that's the chain but that's also how wizards protects itself from the anti-gambling law because they're saying we sold it to the distributor the distributor does whatever he wants to with it we're not telling them to sell it to kids the distributor then sells it to the lgs the lgs says our distributor says, we sold it to the LGS. We don't know who their customer base is. We didn't sell them, sell, tell them to sell it to kids as lottery cards. It, The onus then falls on the LGS. Saying, they're the ones who then have to moderate their player base. I mean, who goes to an LGS that does that? Nobody. They're in business. They want to make money. They're going to sell it to anyone. Oh, you're over 13? Okay, product says 13 plus. Here you go. Have fun. That's my whole point. Why does it have to cost $100 a pack? If you want to make it for Wells, and, and I got one last point to make, but if you want to make it for Wells, why not $50 a pack? Which is still outrageous. You're making 5,000, yeah, 5,000 times what it costs me to print it. If I printed it myself. Without all of my special discounts for years and years of printing. Last point I want to make. Is. This is bad business. Flat out plain and simple. It ain't about this product ain't for everyone. Yeah well you know vintage isn't for me. So therefore I don't buy vintage cards. I don't buy Bursch's workshops. And I don't buy Mox Opals. Or not Mox Opals that's a bad one. Uh, uh, Mox Ruby, Sapphires, uh, Black Lotuses. Vintage is in the format I play. But it's not because I'm priced out of it. I can afford those cards, but I don't play it. So it's a choice I make not to buy those cards. I play Modern and uh, Legacy and Standard and Pioneer. And I should be priced out of having access to the cards and the vehicles to play those formats. If you price it to where more people can play the format, the more that people play the format and fall in love with the formats, they then turn around and want to buy new product to update their decks, that then turn around and want to uh, not just buy more product, but buy things that, you know, like the, the master sets in the future that will update their product. And update their decks. You know. And that's a good business model. You know. I don't care about people's collections. And I know that's a horrible thing to say. Because I have a giant collection. I can show you my desk right now. And there's a 24 card card sorter over here. That I've been sorting decks on. I don't care about my collection. What I care about is when I go to the, my LGS. And they're having modern. It fires because there's enough people that are, you know, able to afford modern cards to build modern decks to fire modern events. You're a trading card game. Emphasis on game. Should you not make the game accessible? And that's what I got for you. 
I want to thank you for watching this video. I could go on about this for another hour, easily. But I want to make more videos. So therefore, hit that subscribe, hit that like button, hit the little bell, get notified anytime we go live. Remember, we are the 99. We are the 99. Peace, love, and chicken grease. I'm out.